All right, fluids 25. For the NPSHA formula, there's an additional V squared over 2G used in the solution video. The reference manual does not have this term in the NPSHA equation. The equation used in the reference manual is HPSA is HP plus HV minus HVPA minus HF as shown. Although the answer is negligible using either equation, what is the importance of using the V squared over 2G? Yeah, so there's a distinction to be made. And is this in the next question? Both on fluids 25. Yeah, so I think we're going to cover both of these at once. How do you know when to use NPSHA equation versus the existing conditions equation? Yeah, that's a great question. This has come up before, so I'll, we'll cover it again here. But if you want to do some perusing of the office hours archive, you can probably find some previous discussions on that. Um, yeah, this problem, I think I was using a version of the equation that must have been from another source. And um, I end up crossing some things out. I think we get to the right place in the end, but the avenue that we take to get there may be a little unusual. But I want to give you some clarity now, at least to the second question here, which is when do you use which one? And then um, if there's any specific anomalies or issues or mismatches, misalignment between what you think is the right way and what you're finding in actual example problems. I think let's bring those problems to the forefront and we'll look at them together and, and try to make sense of it. But I think the, the key thing is to get as a first step to choose the right one, to give yourself a fighting chance. And if we can do that, we're going to have success. So let's talk about those two equations. So let's draw a little picture first. Let's imagine we have a reservoir. And from this reservoir, we are feeding the suction side of a pump. And it goes out to the discharge. And there's some ambient pressure out here. You can use P. I'm using H for uh, the head associated with the pressure of the atmosphere. And then there would be, um, well, let's talk about the existing conditions first, because I actually think that's more intuitive to think about than the design equation. So the existing conditions equation says that the net positive suction head available is equal to HA, which is the atmospheric pressure, plus HS, which is the static pressure on the suction side of the pump. So in order to have that, well, let me give you all the variables first and we'll talk about each one. V squared over 2G, so the velocity pressure, and then minus the vapor pressure. So in order to have the suction side pressure, you'd have to actually measure it with a pressure gauge. And you'd have to locate that pressure gauge right at the inlet to the pump. And then you gather this value. So that's a huge clue right there that we're going to go existing conditions, that there's a gauge that's on the inlet side of the pump, and we know the pressure locally at that point. That's a very, very big clue and indication that we're going to use this equation. And then the same for the velocity, there would be a flow meter. And the flow meter doesn't have to be immediately on the suction side because the volume flow rate through the pump is continuous and the velocity is really a function of the diameter. But let's just, for simplicity, choose the same point. Well, I guess they could change the diameter. That's unusual, but you could change the diameter and that would change the velocity. But you know, keep it simple. There would be a flow meter at somewhere in the same location, somewhere in that um, suction piping. And from that flow meter, we would pick up the velocity. So now we can find the velocity pressure as well. So you can't measure the pressure on the suction side of the pump unless it exists, right? And you can't measure the velocity unless it exists. It has to be built. It's an operational system. We're coming in, we're looking at gauges, we're looking at meters, we're looking at raw data. And we're gathering this information and we're determining objectively without a shadow of a doubt, we're calculating an actual number. It's not a prediction about the future. It's what's really happening in the field. And then the vapor pressure is a function of the temperature, which of course you can measure temperature pro probe. Um, so again, more raw data, put all that together and we can find 
the net positive suction head available. Okay, so that's the exist existing conditions version. The other version, which is like the design version, they don't really give it a label, but I like to think of it as it doesn't exist yet. <laughs> it's just a concept. So, it, it, you know, part of this is reading into the wording of the problem. Does the problem say a design engineer is, you know, putting together a, a concept for a pumping system that would have X, Y, Z parameters? Or does it say there is a pump, there's a gauge, the value is this, right? Then we're looking more at existing conditions. So the way this equation is set up, NPSHA equals HP plus HZ minus HVPA minus HF. So HP is the same as the atmospheric pressure. So HP equals HA, except we don't know what the actual conditions are going to be in the application. So uh, it could be that this is a sealed box and it's pressurized in which case HP would be different than HA. But if it's just an open reservoir, then HP is just the pressure that's pushing down on the top of the reservoir, which is the pressure of the atmosphere. Now, maybe the application is that it's at some different elevation, it's at high elevation, and therefore it could be more than standard atmospheric conditions. It doesn't have to be 14.7 PSI. Um, so you know, that would be something that the design engineer would have to determine. So they would have to tell you that in the problem statement. HZ is going to be the difference between the top of the reservoir and the center line of the pump. So this is your Z in feet. Now, the opposite is also possible. You could have the reservoir located at an elevation that's lower than the pump so that it has to pump uphill. So the reservoir is here and the pump is way up here. And then you have um, an HZ value that's not being added. It's being subtracted. But that's something that could be engineered. So again, this number, they could give it to you in the problem statement, but they could also make it the unknown. And they could say, there's a pump. The manufacturer says the net positive suction head uh, available must be at least some number. Figure out the height um, that the reservoir has to be at in order to make sure that the pump does not cavitate. That would be a, a problem they could ask. The vapor pressure is the same thing. It's a function of temperature. The design engineer would have to specify what the operating temperatures are going to be for this application. And since a higher temperature means the vapor pressure is going to be higher, since it's more likely that that fluid is going to want to change to a vapor, the design engineer should use the highest temperature that would ever be observed in that application, not the average temperature, and then it could be higher and you get into a, a problem there. And then lastly, the losses. How come we didn't have to consider the losses when we we're doing existing conditions? Well, when we we're doing existing conditions, we measured the pressure, both the static pressure and the velocity pressure immediately at the inlet to the pump. So there's no losses to consider because there's no length between that point and the pump inlet or you know, negligible length. Here, we have to consider the losses because we don't have the opportunity to measure that value directly. We do have the difference in height, but there's all this piping length that there are going to be losses. So that has to enter into the equation. And of course, HF, we know the Darcy equation. So this is going to be a function of length, velocity, and diameter. We can crunch those numbers. And in a way, that can be engineered too, because the engineer can you know, have some say in what the length of that pipe is going to be. And you can choose the diameter, which influences the velocity. So there's a lot of um, levers to play with here in design. And they can specify what certain things have been determined and, and leave the rest unknown. And then it's up to you to figure out uh, how to work toward the unknowns. So I hope that kind of distinguishes the two. I think, uh, like I said, I, I gave you a lot of kind of qualitative ideas here to consider and how to choose which one. But I think it'll be obvious just in the wording of the question. And if they give you a picture and the picture has delta Z, it's probably going to be this one. If it has a gauge, it's probably going to be this one. So just look for the clues. And also, a lot of times, if you kind of try it both ways, you'll find that one way you can't do it because you don't have the right information going in and the other way you can. And um, you just follow the, the breadcrumbs on the only path that actually works.